Hey everybody, I really hate psyops. I'm sure you do too. I hate being lied to. I hate people telling a nation, individuals, a lie to forward their point of view. And today, I've discovered the truth behind one of the biggest psyops that the British people have been told. And that's the psyop, or lie, behind the true nature of the de Havilland mosquito, also known as the wooden wonder. Construction was of wood, and this was revolutionary for first-class British aircraft. But wood was chosen for three main reasons. For quick production, to use fresh material supplies, and to employ a new group of labor. Wood construction also gave this plane more buoyancy in the event of coming down on water, and in place of the clang of metal is the sound of carpentry. In place of sparks, there's sawdust. Stop! It's not true. All right, it's partially true. A wonderful British phrase, it's economical with the truth. The de Havilland Mosquito substructure was made of wood. In fact, it was very clever to be made of wood. But what the de Havilland Mosquito really was is the world's first composite plane, the world's strongest epoxy resin plane. It was strong in tensile strength, in compression, and incredibly light. It completely bamboozled and confused the Germans when they eventually captured one, when they eventually unpicked it and discovered it wasn't made of wood, but an epoxy resin. They said it was the best airplane in World War II, and that they couldn't build one. Today, I'm going to tell you the secret history of Norman De Bruni. Hey everybody, this is going to be a bit of a different film. I really, really want to make a serious one-hour documentary about epoxies and about the de Havilland mosquito. But this isn't going to be this today. Let me tell you how the story came about and you'll understand why it's so good and why it's so secret. So uh, a few years ago, I was working with Gareth Wynne Williams. Gareth's dad built the first binary counter for Lord Rutherford at the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge. And we made a fabulous film about Charles Wynne Williams, how he built the first binary counter, how it went on to actually bust the Enigma code, how Charles went on to work with Robert Watson Watt um, on radar, and also on the project to find the neutron. It, it's absolutely one of the best films ever. And the Cavendish Laboratory were very, very kind in uh, giving me and uh, Charles's son, Gareth, all the resources to make this fabulous film about Lord Rutherford and the binary counter. And when I was there with Gareth, uh, speaking to one of the senior directors of the Cavendish Laboratory, part of Trinity College, Cambridge, I said to him, what other great stories of inventions have come out of Cavendish, knowing that there were many? And he, of course, pointed me at Lord Rutherford in the fly in the cathedral, splitting the atom. And then the fabulous story proving that the universe is expanding, and Fred Hoyle's uh, rebuttal of that with his idea that there was no such thing as the Big Bang. And probably my favourite story of all is Jocelyn Bell's discovery of LGM, Little Green Men, which of course turned out, as she realised, to be a natural phenomenon called pulsars. And then this senior person from the Cavendish Laboratory said, and Simon, you can't forget Norman de Bruni's contribution to the Cavendish. He built the modern world by inventing epoxy resin and building the de Havilland Mosquito Aeroplane. I was going, I've never heard of young Norman. Tell me more about it. So today I'll share with you my basic film notes that I'd like to make into a proper film about Norman. So Norman was born in Chile and as a young man got a, uh, a scholarship to go to Trinity in Cambridge as a chemist. And he worked there and his specialism is uh, long chain organic molecules, carbon stuff, long chain stuff that make interesting building blocks, you know, including glue, I suppose. 
And he came up with this amazing substance. It was a long chain molecule, which is very, very complex and interconnected. And when added, when you add a starter or a hardening agent, it all joins together, bonding whatever it's stuck to on both sides closer and closer and becoming more and more entangled until it turns into a solid glass plastic-like solid structure, which is incredibly light and strong. It really built the modern world. But there's an amazing story how this kid at the Cavendish lab jumped into aircraft production. So the young Norman in Cambridge um, took a joyride in a de Havilland airplane in, uh, I think, about 1934, 1935, and immediately, a bit like me, said, I want to learn to fly. But in 1930s, really, there weren't that many planes for general aviation people to fly in. The Tiger Moth and things were around. Um, most amateurs actually built their own plane. And so Norman said, well, I'll build my own plane out of wood and epoxy resin. And that was a novel design. So he built this. It's called a Snark. And it, it's amazing. It had a heavy gypsy moth engine in it. It had leather seats. It sat four people, full fuel, and it had folding wings. It needed to be tested. There was no way he would get a flight certificate from the British CAA, or whatever it was called at the time. So they looked at it and tested it and came back and said, it's amazing. It's strong and light. It's actually stronger than aluminium. And so they granted the SNARK a full aviation certificate. And Norman flew all over the world, including flying it to Berlin and back, which is fantastic. And the key to the SNARK success was this epoxy resin. He soaked balsa wood. Now, balsa wood is a very light, easy to form um, exotic wood. Imagine it is hollow. It's like a foam almost, but has no structural strength. But if you fill up the interior hollow cavities of balsa wood with epoxy resin and then a hardener, it turns into a hard plastic shape that you can preform with wood. And that's what happened with the Mosquito. It is a wooden airplane underneath, but in fact, the overall structure is actually a plastic composite airplane. And that was very, very secret. What happened next is a fortuitous accident. So the young Norman was flying his snark out of Cambridge Airport. And one of the FBO fixed base operators at Cambridge Airport is a large company who is still there today called Marshall Engineering. And Marshalls are very friends, of course, and know uh, down the road Hatfield and de Havilland Company. And Marshalls had heard that the de Havilland Company were having a particular problem with glue. At the time, New propellers were being built. Uh, original a propeller would be something called a fixed pitch propeller. So you've got two blades and a hub and it rotates. And you know, you see that in GA planes. But as engines got bigger and as planes got more sophisticated, you had these variable pitch propellers. And these are individual propeller blades in a hydraulic actuated hub. And lets you, that lets you feather the, air, the propeller into the wind or make it stronger into the wind uh, for uh, for cruise flight or landing and takeoff. And it, it's, uh, it's good, but the individual propeller blades had to take a lot of strength. And they were built of laminated wood, probably stuck together with animal glue. I'm not sure what else was around in the 30s. And they were delaminating. And there was a lot of problems. And de Havilland heard from Marshalls that this young kid called Norman um, had built a composite airplane and it had invented this kind of glue that could stick anything together. The other thing about epoxies is that you can stick metal and rubber and wood as a sandwich together. And that was another thing that de Havilland's wanted for their undercarriage. So de Havilland Aviation got in touch with Norman and said, can we test your glue for our propellers? And gave him a thousand pounds. Norman was so impressed with that large amount of money, he actually left Trinity, I believe, 
and set up a company in Duxford. So you've got Cambridge, Duxford, and then Hatfield. They're all in a line. I used to live there. And in fact, I used to drive past Norman's Glue Factory every day. So I kind of knew about it, but I didn't know the full story. And so Norman set up this glue factory where he made a research glue at Duxford, which he called RE, Research Dux, so Redux. And Redux really was a classified secret name. It was Redux. And another glue he made called Aerolite, which was what made the de Havilland mosquito actually work. It's a composite plane. I just want you to think about something. So if you believe the psyop of the de Havilland mosquito, that it's made of wood, which of course it is on the inside, but not when it flies, tell me how this works. So you've got a mosquito made of balsa wood with laminate spruce um, veneer on the outside, we're told. And it's got two giant Merlin engines on it, and it can carry 400 pounds of bombs, and it's built of balsa wood. You taxi it out, uh, uh, and it would snap it off. It isn't built of wood. I always wondered this. No. The clever thing was that the, that the de Havilland did was they knew about Norman's um, epoxy and they proposed a wooden epoxy plane to the war office at the beginning of World War II. And the war office said, no, we're going to build it out of aluminium. And then when aluminium, aluminium became scarce in the mid 1940s, they went back to de Havilland and said, can you build us a wooden aeroplane? which, of course, wasn't wood, but it was made of epoxy resin. And they went, yes, because surrounding Hatfield, surrounding Cambridge, surrounding where I used to live, there's lots of carpenters who were tradespeople who could work in balsa wood and in spruce veneer and make subsections for the de Havilland Company. So you got you got cabinet makers and coffin makers and 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 piano makers literally making subsections in their shed in their workshop and shipping it to Hatfield to the de Havilland factory where it secretly went into a a different workshop and it was coated and injected with this resin made by Norman this redux stuff and put into autoclaves vacuum chambers and turned the balsa wood into solid epoxy resin. The plane was made of epoxy resin with wood on the inside. So you're all shouting, it's a wooden plane. Well, there's wood in the middle, but actually most of it, most of the strong structural parts, the wing spars, the fuselage, the wings, anything, the undercarriage, was all made and bonded with Norman's redox and aerolite, an epoxy resin, which is a long chain carbon um, uh, material which bonds and crunches together when you put a starter in it and it actually goes hard. And that's the clever thing. And that's what we as members of the public weren't told. It was so secret and the Germans couldn't find out about it that the war office decided to lie to everybody, including the British public, and say that the mosquito was the wooden wonder, when in fact it never was. They just didn't want that secret to come out. Eventually it did, and this is the other great film sequence that I'd like to make. A mosquito crashed and was taken back to Germany at the time in World War II and was analysed. And what the Germans found was amazing. They said it was stronger and lighter than any other airplane they'd ever come across. And they wanted to build it, but they couldn't. This is so key. Remember, when you, if you're my age, you grew up long before we had natural gas, North Sea gas, we had something called town gas, and that was made in the gas works. Any sizable uh, town would have coal being turned into gas at the gas works and other things. I remember going to the gas works with my dad and buying a tin of tar or a tin of creosote. And my mum would buy coal tar soap all products of the gas works. Well, Germany didn't have coal in that number and didn't have gas works. And they were turning anything that they could into gasoline and diesel and aviation fuel for their war effort. They didn't have the technology to make glue. 
Britain did. The precursors for Norman's epoxy resin came from the gasworks, and Britain had gasworks. So that's why we, Britain, could build epoxy resin, and Germany never did, which is a good thing. So um, I hope I haven't burst your bubble, and it, the mosquito really is actually more amazing than you think. I'd just like to say something bit odd is, is it still secret? Because I reached out to the de Havilland uh, engineering department, um, the history engineering department, and asked them about Norman and, uh, and epoxy resins. And they wrote back a strange letter saying they're not the right people to talk to. And when I said, well, who would be? They said the Mosquito Museum, of course, just north of London. And um, I got in touch with them. And they said it was before our time. I, I don't understand. Is it still secret? I still think that British people think the mosquito was the wooden wonder. Uh, every film that I've ever seen about the mosquito calls it the wooden wonder. The old archive film calls it the wooden wonder. The only film that I've seen actually talking about epoxy resin and Norman de Bruyne and the mosquito is a film in Spanish, maybe for the Chilean audience, but it's not well known in Britain whatsoever. I would like to make the Norman's de Bruyne story, the mosquito real story, the epoxy resin story into a proper 50 minute documentary. If you're interested, um, Norman went on to sell Araldite uh, to Seba, and then Seba sells it to Hexel, who make Loctite. So if you work for Loctite, are you interested in funding a film about the founder of your company, Norman, and how he actually built the world's best aeroplane, thanks to epoxy resins. I think that would be a fabulous film for you to fund. Get in touch. Or viewers, if you want to crowdfund a proper documentary, and there's great stories. The De Bruyne family still are alive. They've got an incredible archive of Norman. The Cavendish Laboratory will help us make the film uh, with all their materials. They've got all of Norman's original test gear and, and notes, which they've kept and will share with me uh, free of charge, which is very kind because they would like the story made. I've also reached out to my old mates at the BBC. You remember the Easter BBC, BBC4, where you get films about Blackpool trams or Dave. <laughs> Sorry, not films about Dave. There was a channel called Dave that made films about V2 rockets. Well, I think that's now all on YouTube. And my contacts at the BBC, bless them, um, are saying we're not interested. So it has to be self-funded and it has to be funded by somebody who's actually interested in telling the correct story. So get in touch if you would like to get involved or know more about epoxy resins and its history. If you worked at de Havilland and you know the true story of the mosquito, let the truth be out there. And thanks very much for watching. Um, please support my channel and these kind of stories by giving it a like, subscribing, and becoming a patron, because the truth needs to be out there.